I'm Travis Wayne Goodsell, and over all these years, with over 8,000 videos, I continue to get commenters who demand that I get to the point, that I quit explaining my videos. They're too long, people are getting bored. So, let's try some of these for you, see how you do. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the great and abominable church led by Lucifer. Okay, next. Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon are Jewish, not Christian. Next. Joseph Smith is your founding forerunning Christ, and I, Travis Wayne Goodsell, am your restoring Christ. Yeah, I kind of need to explain things, don't I? Quit being the enemy so that I can save your lives. Travis Wayne Goodsell just finally finished up Stargate Atlantis, the season series ending where Enoch returns to Earth 
Now I'll be uh, getting to uh, the latest release of uh, the Equalizer, Queen Latifah, and then resume with Battlestar Galactica by the Mormon, about the 12 tribes of the city of Enoch returning to Earth in the latter days. <sighs> Not a coincidence that the timing is the way the timing is. We are about to experience the greatest prophecy and revelation that the world has ever denied because of Christianity blinding them. These are going to be some of the most historic, greatest events that we'll ever experience. So, Jeremiah chapter 23. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, the Jewish Christ, not Jesus, the Christian Christ. It's unbelievable the ignorance that leads to hate and even leads to holy war violence because of this anti-Semitic misinterpretation revisionist history in his days Judah shall be saved were the Jews sh saved in the Roman period time no they were utterly destroyed just as the prophecy for Mormons will be utterly destroyed if they do not hearken to this Christ. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, <coughs> that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That is the Jewish Christ. From the law, Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. I, the Lord, will raise up a prophet from the midst of thee, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. But behold, the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own lands. And... Yeah, they don't reference it. They're trying to cover it up with a whole bunch of TG Jesuses. But there is in verse 8 TG Israel, 10 lost tribes of, for this act by the man like Moses. City of Enoch. I know what I'm talking about. Too many people complain. You don't get right to the point. I expect I'm going to be putting that little minute clip in at the beginning of this video. None of you knew about the Jewish interpretation. So don't think that I can just give you the answers and that you can all understand it and figure it out. Here trying to throw in spam against me to destroy the prophecies and revelations of the Jews. And it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. 
So in Joseph Smith history, verse 40, Emmanuel comes to Joseph Smith and says, I'm coming in the latter days. Quotes from Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, but uses the Acts version precisely as it stands for utter destruction if you don't hearken to him. And yeah, it's me in case you I did the minute clip. Cat's out of the bag. You're now compelled to believe. You're under greater law now because you chose not to study. Chose not to believe Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon when they told you you were Jewish. You fell for the con of the great and abominable church. Or holding you in bondage, making you wear underwear. Section 103, verse 16, talking about the redemption of Zion. Therefore, I will raise up unto my people, he's going to be a Mormon, the Christ is going to be a Mormon. Who shall lead you like as Moses led the children of Israel? For you are the children of Israel and the seed of Abraham and must be stripped of your underwear with an outstretched arm. If you're not going to watch conference and listen to Oaks' talk, it's on you. And so, yeah, the whole thing that Joseph Smith added in the selections from the book of Moses about Enoch. Now all of that is Moses gathering Mormons from all over the world in the coming days, because this is, I'm blowing the trumpet. If you saw that video this morning, sign in the heavens, and so here's the likeness of things on the earth from the Joseph Smith translation, Revelation 12, verse 1. <clears throat> See, I get inspired. I obey the inspiration. The results confirm that it's good and true. So precious and few are the moments we two can share. Foresees the restoration, the gathering, the second coming, and the return of Zion. It's not a second coming. And even this church, with its abominable copying of Constantine's replacement of the Jews, has turned the second coming into a third, fourth, fifth, sixth coming. So... Yep, there's utterly destroyed. Uh, verse 7. And the Lord said unto me, Prophesy. And I prophesied, saying, Behold, the people of Canaan, those were the Israelites, which are numerous, shall go forth in battle array against the people of Shum, and shall slay them, that they shall utterly be destroyed. And the people of Canaan and then they're using Canaan rather than the house of Israel because Canaanites were there before the house of Israel came in. And Shum is name. And the name is Emmanuel. So interesting how Joseph is wording this. And Mormons believe it's literal history because they're using Christian Jesus to interpret it. So you don't see the truth. Yeah. Fascinating. So Salt Lake Valley shall be barren and unfruitful and desert. None other people shall dwell there because nobody wants to live with Mormons. But the people of Canaan curse the land with much heat and barrenness. Joseph is awesome. You know, Mormons claim that Joseph is awesome and true and a prophet, and they have no idea what they're saying, and they don't actually believe if the true part of it from the Jewish perspective. So, 
fun stuff. Maybe I should use my, uh, uh, use that for the thumbnail picture. I used it not too many weeks ago. It was a different setup. Throw in general conference. Mormons will be confused. What? No, Zion isn't here. It, City of Enoch isn't here. <laughs> you lie, Travis. You lie. <sighs> so, yeah, I noticed uh, YouTube has rigged the algorithms yet again, or Mormons are now coming to the reality that their Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been lying to them and is going to murder them in the coming days and they don't want to be saved, they don't want to go to Zion chaos and pandemonium and so Mormons do the typical thing, run and hide hope I go away ain't gonna happen, fulfillments are gonna happen you can't stop it they're gonna happen Okay, let's get rid of some note papers here. I uh, did that one. Just did that. One down. Oh yeah, yeah, we need to talk about this. Because notice how Christians and Islamists are purposely causing the biblical prophecies according to Christian and Islamist prophecy. And revisionist prophecy by attacking Israel, even the UN, all the world is attacking Israel. That's their interpretation. So they're purposely making it happen because Jesus isn't real. Jesus didn't come to do it. So they've got to do it. And, and so, I am kind of surprised that the stock market hasn't begun to collapse yet. Because back in August 2nd, 1990, President Poppy Bush sent our troops into the Persian Gulf and started a war without Congress's approval. And many of our soldiers had Gulf War Syndrome as a result of this. And the X-Files covered it as well. <laughs> and so I was on my New York, New York mission, and I was in Connecticut, Almost had his last name. Ah. Oh. Almost had it. Oatly. Right? No. No, 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 not Oatly. That's the companion to uh, the other guy at the beginning of my mission. Oatly? Maybe? No. It's going to bug me now. <laughs> We're now in Connecticut, <clears throat> which was part of the New York, New York mission at the time. And so those of you who are too young are going, New York, New York mission? Is it north or south? <laughs> uh -uh. I'm the cause for it being split up. You are not supposed to know about it because we're supposed to sign non-disclosure agreements. I finished up in the Bronx and I was asked by the mission president, Coford, before he was about to quit and go into the first quorum of 70 to uh, fix the uh, membership records to try to see if we can uh, make it into a, an actual ward. <clears throat> 
and uh, get things going there. <coughs> so McFarland and I were sent in, and, and uh, we got it taken care of before McFarland went home. And uh, I, we uh, learned that we were short by a number of elders to turn it into a ward. And, uh, and so after leaving, uh, the mission president had uh, continued to send me letters or something like that. The mission committee, whatever they're called. And I learned that uh, uh, because of the excessive number in the branch, unable to turn it into a ward, uh, it got split into two branches. And uh, then I would hear soon thereafter that uh, the mission got split into a north and south as uh, my one cousin went to the northern mission. So, because of McFarland and I, that, that all triggered the, the splits. So anyway, in Connecticut, we, uh, on the 2nd of August, 1990, go and visit one of the members of the New Canaan Ward at his rich uh, palatial estate. This is where uh, Steve Young uh, grew up, or at least his parents had moved to. Parents had his home, had a home there. So it's unclear as to whether, uh, I don't know didn't follow his life like all the young girls did. <laughs> all of a sudden young girls are interested in football for the first time in their lives. <laughs> he came to church one Sunday with the, I don't know if it was the woman he eventually married or if it was just another arm candy, but uh, he was, had a whole flock of people all around him wanting autographs. And, Leave him alone. It's bad enough that he has to try to weed through all the women who want him to make sure that he's not going to get suckered into a loveless marriage. Despite the myth of his dad saying that he's a menace to society, being over 26 years of age, even though it was Hebrew C. Kimball and it was other abusive terms, and it was 21 years of age, not 26. <clears throat> but, because uh, <laughs> 21 is when you turn an adult. And if you're not married by the time you turn an adult, <laughs> And so we're there and we're in his backyard and he has a, a full tennis court and an open field where he can go hunting and, and uh, very nice. And in the middle of talking with us, he's about to explain how I, if we want to get rich, we have to read the Book of Mormon. Remaining cryptic on purpose because he got rich from daddy's inheritance or whatever. And uh, and so he gets a phone call and he has to take it. It's from work. And apparently he's involved in a stock market. And uh, the employee on the other end of the line, we could hear him, you know, panicking and the uh, member is uh, trying to calm him down relax calm down this is not the end of the world this is not Armageddon don't sell the stock <laughs> he 
he believed the Mormon prophecies about what is supposed to happen and knew that this isn't it because certain other things did not happen in its place according to Mormon mythos about the second coming as they believe and so yeah he was right but how many Mormons no one understand that this is it because uh, Monson in 2015 said nope this isn't it nothing to see here move along keep paying your tithing Nelson would go on to say these are the latter days and twice once in his first conference 2018 in the coming days you'll see the marvelous wonders of Jesus before his coming and then again in 2022 in the coming days second coming of Jesus magical marvelous powers and yet Irene would come out and say it's not for another three more generations <laughs> And so, yeah, Mormons pick and choose what they want to believe. They don't bother to study and research themselves. They have to be compelled in all things as to what to do. And so the video this morning, again, it was an edited version for the specific New Year today. But uh, I don't know how many of you have seen the previous two videos that I put it in, didn't I? Or was it just the one? I think it was just the one. And then I saved it and then used it today with the editings. <coughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's blatantly obvious that this is it. It's been it. That's why I've been doing these videos on YouTube. If you go back on my video page and you click oldest, you'll see what I was using YouTube for in the beginning. And then all of a sudden you see a switch. And I start doing signs in the heavens videos for you. And then I start getting critical. Because I'm trying to warn you of the dangers of this great and abominable church. And if you had been following me all these 8K videos, you would have seen what I was up against all these years. You'd see when YouTube attacks, you'd see when the church attacks, you'd see the transition of how I ended up here in this apartment. So the key thing is when you're studying church history is to put the chronological history in the proper location so that when somebody tries to claim that something happened before it happened, you can dismiss it as false. You know, the first creed of Christianity was what created Christianity, thus created Jesus Christ. And so thus there was no Christianity, thus no Christian prior to the creation of Christianity and Jesus. And that was 325 CE. The gospel scriptures were written by Jews about their Christ whom they're prophesying about for the future and so even though they use the character name Jesus it's not Christian Jesus because it was written before the creation of Christianity that's what the Jews did was abominable in stealing the Jewish scriptures and if you simply just reference the chronology, you would figure this out. 
not make the anachronistic error that Christianity does in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it's also worse for the Church as they created forged documents claiming to be by Joseph Smith and trying to place them in a previous chronological order where they did not exist, thus the forged documents. But Orman still should have been smart enough to go, wait a minute, this new released Brigham Young scripture claiming to be by Joseph Smith violates the words of Joseph Smith from the previous Doctrine and Covenants and violates the Book of Mormon. That should have been all you needed to know that those are not true. And Joseph Smith warns you not to be deceived by anybody else who's not authorized making changes against his word and the word of the, the Book of Mormon. Oh well, people don't believe. Okay. So, last year, in February 2023, YouTube was under attack for their bullying of teenagers who would end up committing suicide after posting videos that they were abused for. And so the female got fired, and a new CEO replaced her, as he's the one who's been involved in destroying YouTube. And he would then escalate the destruction of YouTube. The downfall of YouTube, and also in the coming days. In which he program the algorithms to purge women from YouTube for being women because he put in Christian nationalist white supremacist programming to claim that if women are doing videos women are sexual and therefore porn and therefore violate YouTube's religious standards and values of no porn. And so the algorithm purged YouTube of just hundreds if not thousands of women's channels. And I've covered that as I have been using YouTube to watch uh, try on haul video channels. And, and I have to explain my childhood. Remember 8,000? Can't explain it just by telling you. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I saw that it was not just women, it was also teenage girls that YouTube was shutting down. This is sexual abuse that YouTube is committing. And so, after this purge had occurred of women being purged for being women, I then began to see YouTube getting flooded, flooded, flooded. Let me see how many I've been able to notice. 170 only from what I've been able to notice. different channels popping up doing educational breastfeeding videos in response to YouTube's purge of women because they were women. You go girls. <laughs> There's a pushback against YouTube for the sexual abuse against women by women doing breastfeeding <laughs> instructional videos. It's just awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, 
I, I can see though that with this other algorithmic problem that YouTube is doing, that they're on the verge of collapsing. This new CEO is a dumbass. But anyway, I saw Blockbuster fall because of algorithms, and here comes YouTube, here comes the internet too. Pay attention to that. That's why they're able to threaten the government to not be punished for their antitrust monopolizing. And so, then, yeah, this is it. Cool, we're done. Mormon Mary, Mary the Mormon. She says she's an Uber driver, and so when I go out running in the mornings, I end up running past an Uber parking lot. And and ever since I found Uber Mary Mormon, I do wonder now if she's among those in the parking lot, coming in, going out, parking, sleeping, waiting. I do wonder. But uh, it, it's interesting to get and hear the mind of a Mormon because she too is clueless that these are the latter days. She's trying to use YouTube to talk about her life as a Mormon. And she's not really doing doctrinal videos. She's not doing historical church history videos. She's talking about her life as a Mormon, what she does to show that she's a normal person and all this stuff. Kind of an interesting woman. I don't know what happened to have her be single mom. I think she indicated in the last video that she did that her kids are all groated up. This is my quest second question or comment, which had questions, had uh, brought up because I, I didn't know. And so I, and it's so interesting that she would bring it up in this video. But. Uh, she didn't delete the second video, or the second comment, but she didn't put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting that there are a number of Mormons who are naive and innocent, not knowing Mormonism not knowing that this is it not knowing of the coming events just this month alone that are prophesied to happen and so yeah it would be very confusing if nothing happens after all these years after all the prophecies all getting fulfilled even all prophecies for me all fulfilled and yet, then nothing. <laughs> the Jewish God just gives up, says, eh, I quit. <laughs> what are you doing? He gave me all this inspiration for the Exodus, for the building, designing, and running of Zion, and you quit? The election then goes on, and and no bloodbath. Trump concedes, and lets Harris run, and become president. <laughs> no January 6th again, despite Oak saying that 2020 was just a test run for 2024. <laughs> the Jewish God just quits. And so, yes, there are a number of Mormons who are raised up 
to be fence-sitters of Mormonism. <laughs> to wait to be compelled to think and feel and believe and do. And, and wait until the prophet tells them that sure enough, this is it. Now you can go and overthrow America. <laughs> Even though Nelson, I've been trying to do the videos, I've been telling you to do stuff, and you, you're not listening. And so he had to put in a Saudi Arabian as a puzzle. <laughs> because the rest of Mormons are not going up the ladder of disinformation for rank advancement. So, here we go. Are you ready?